This is Chris the Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today I'm going to be talking about thickening your paints. And you know, if you've ever wanted to thicken your paint, you can actually thicken your paint and there are some benefits to it. I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to show you the easy process of how to thicken your paint. I'll be talking about how you can thin your paint also. So if you want to know how to thicken some paint, stay tuned for this video. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about thickening your paints and, and somebody would ask, you know, why in the world would you wanna thicken your paint? It's like we talk about thinning our paints all the time. We're adding mineral spirits to paint, we're adding water to paint, we're adding lacquer thinner to paints and, and to thin them, to you know, get the viscosity down to make them a, um, a thinner viscosity product and, and to spray better. Now, why would you wanna thicken your paint? And um, that's a good question. So some products nowadays, some of the uh, 2K polys and poly urethane products out there are very thin and that they don't do what we call hang very well so if you're spraying vertically if you're one of those guys that's spraying like with a PSDR system so you can uh, paint cabinets fast and efficiently you're spraying vertically and you're uh, more likely to get runs than if your cabinets are laying down your cabinet doors are laying down flat I mean you simply just can't get runs when they're laying flat you can really load the paint on so one of the drawbacks is spraying vertically yes is runs and if you're spraying your doors um, horizontally, well, you still got to spray your face frames and you can easily get runs on face frames. Also, if you're using products that have a really um, thin viscosity to them and they don't hang well and run easy. So there are some products that um, I've been using, you know, over the last two years that I really like to thicken the product because it gives them the ability to hang better. And then it actually um, gives the, the product a little bit more body when it actually dries out. So I'm going to show you the simple little process i use a product right here this is um cw9002 a water-based thickener that i add to the product and there's there's nothing you know uh really scientific about it you just add as much thickener um uh, to the product you want to get the viscosity that you're looking for to get the results that you're looking for and one of the 2k polys i've been recently using it comes out extremely thin and it's been running you know really easily by adding a thickener to it it hangs a lot better and i'm having a a lot more success in results with the product this is a thickener right here and um, i'm not actually sure what the chemical makeup of that thickener is but it kind of just looks like cornstarch and somebody actually in one of my posts had told me that you can thicken your paint with cornstarch which is a food product and I'm not sure you would really want to do that, um, but you know, hey, a lot of people do a lot of un unusual things like adding soap to your paint to get it to level out. I wouldn't add soap to my paint. I'd just use XIM, XIM Latex Extender, but I started messing around with the product and starting to change the viscosities to get a thicker, you know, um, 2K poly. And I started adding a tablespoon of the product in there. It thickened it up. It was really nice. I really liked it. I started using it right away. I'm like, I want it a little bit thicker. I uh, got to a point where one of the gallons I added uh, three tablespoons to the gallon. And what I noticed that it actually takes a little bit of time for it to thicken. And by adding multiple tablespoons, I didn't think it was thick enough. But then I realized it takes about 30 minutes for the thickener to really um, work well and thicken it to um, th thicken the paint or coating to um, the viscosity that it's actually doing or how it's actually supposed to act so give it some time put your thickener in there stir it in there gives it some give it some time to do the work and thicken the product don't be in a hurry and i'm going to say probably 30 minutes to an hour before you begin using the product um, or testing the viscosity or even adding a catalyst now all you got to do is just really simple i just use um, a ta tablespoon i got plastic tablespoons metal tablespoons i just you know keep in my vehicle that i just add the thick thickener uh, too. So I just take in and it's super thick. Like it says, it's a thickener. So the product is thick and I'm not like measuring it out like um, food, like an exact tablespoon, but I just get that tablespoon, dip it in there. Now I got a bunch of product on there and then I'm going to take that product and begin dumping that in. And I just we call that one tablespoon and you just begin stirring that slowly stirring that 
into your product. Now the thickener is a water-based product, so when you're done, you can clean up your tablespoon with water. What I typically do is just drop it in a five-gallon bucket that already has water. So I'm just gonna slowly stir this in. And some of this is gonna be just trial and error. I mean, a gallon is always changes the viscosity, you know, for me to exactly what I'm looking for. Everybody has, you know, what they like. Every, uh, most paints will, you know, have a vis viscosity rating of what you should be spraying at to get good results on. And um, so once again, it is kind of just like trial and error. So I'm just gonna let, you know, the product run off. It's water base so i just wipe usually just wipe it off scrape it in my container now this i'm just going to drop into a um, five gallon bucket of water i'm going to drop it into a measuring cup right there you usually just scrape off good to just wear a pair of latex gloves if you don't want any of the product on your hands just going to set that aside and i'll just begin stirring it in once again it mixes in pretty fast to stir that around for several minutes. I'm gonna put the lid back on, I'm gonna let it set, and then I'm gonna stir it one more time. That's how simple and easy it is to thicken your paint. Now thinning your paint, there's a lot of paints out there that don't, um, in, especially in other countries like in Europe, that don't spray very well through an airless sprayer, so you, have, you actually have to thin them. This is an unusual case where actually thickening the paint works really, really well, makes the product perform a lot better. Now this is a white, and the viscosity of whites is too, typically um, a little bit thicker. Um, I've been recently spraying some really dark bronzes, some really dark blues, adding a lot of that um, tint color it into the paint thins the paint out quite a bit and um, causes it to not hang as well and that's where your thickener will really come into play once again when it comes to the products and self uh, thickening the products make sure you always you know do what the manufacturer recommends you know if they um, tell you that you should not be adding a thickener to the paint you probably shouldn't be adding a thickener to the paint but there's quite a few products out there cabinet coatings and stuff that you can actually you know thicken the paint it does adding this thickener doesn't degrade the quality of the paint at all it doesn't change the color of the paint either so it's a great product to use i've had a lot of success with it so once I'm done stirring this in, so again, I'm just gonna put my lid back on and then I'm gonna let it set for about a half hour, stir it again, and I can check my viscosity. If you've never checked the viscosity of paint before, you know, when it comes to cabinet coatings, there's, and especially uh, spraying through an airless sprayer, there are certain viscosities you're actually searching for. I've got a video on um, how to actually check viscosities of paint and stuff and um pretty in depth but uh, i'm going to give you just a little look at checking the viscosity i've got multiple um viscosity you know testers right here a seda cup ford ford cup a really cheap cup here's a zon viscosity uh meter right here and this is actually a really nice one with a long handle on it i really like that one a lot um very professional looking uh, viscosity meter but even these cheap ones can test your viscosity and the simple way to test viscosity is i'm going to dip this thing into my product i'm going to rise it out the product's going to begin spilling out of your viscosity meter and you're going to time it it's going to be just pouring out and you're going to you're going to have a start uh, a stopwatch some type of um, way you can you know, run your time, stopwatch, use your iPhone, something like that. When I rise it out, I'm gonna start my time. It's gonna start pouring out. It's gonna have a steady stream. As soon as that stream breaks, I'm going to um, hit the stopwatch and that time is going to be the reading. Now, you're, um, there's a lot of different um, readings and uh, variations in those readings that you wanna use to chart out things and get the proper viscosity that you want, but just uh, look at it, what it looks like here, or go check out my video in depth on testing viscosity. So I'm just gonna fill up, this is a Ford Ford cup right here. I'm gonna have my timer, just gonna raise it out, click my timer, I'm gonna allow this to start running. A steady stream, you can see it's got a steady stream. So this is a fairly thick product and it's just gonna continue running, continue running and this is gonna run for a long time.
almost there. Now the stream starting to break now. Well, right. There we go. So now the stream's starting to break and that's going to be my viscosity. I'm going to register that time. That's my viscosity. And typically what I'm looking for in cabinet coatings when I'm spraying through an HVLP sprayer, I'm looking for 34 seconds. I want something that's going to run and I want that stream to break at around 34 seconds. And that's going to give me the viscosity that I'm looking for. Now, if you're the type of person that doesn't like to uh, thin your paints or thicken your paints because you think it um, degrades the quality of the paint or there's other kind of issues with it, you can actually heat up your paint and um, heating up your paint will actually thin it. So there are times when we will heat up our paint and we'll put it, put it in a bucket of warm water and let it set for like an hour or so. And if you do that, that's gonna thin your paint. There's also bucket warmers you can put your paint into that'll warm your paint. That's gonna change the viscosity of your paint and make it thinner. Now, um, with that said, over time, if you're spraying in a cool environment, once you warm it, it is going to start cooling it down if you take it out of that warm water or out of that bucket warmer. So you gotta keep that in mind too, but Simple little um, tips and tricks, you know, thickening your paint, uh, thinning, talking about thinning your products. Um, should you thicken, should you thin, it's um, really up to you and the desired results that you want to get. If you've got any questions about this video, just leave it in the comment section down below. If you've got any tips or tricks thickening or thinning your paint, let us know any products that you use, um, anything unusual out there. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, because if you don't hit them both, it doesn't really do anything. You'll never get notified. I come come out with a new video and it's just a simple email that just notifies you. It's a simple way to help support us making these free videos to help you guys out. And if you've enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time right here on Paint Life TV.